In this video, I'm gonna show you three positions that are gonna help your backhand improve tremendously. The biggest thing that holds us back from really improving is not getting in enough quality reps. Most of us go out to the court once or twice a week and we play with a friend and we think that's enough. But if you really wanna close the gap or even overtake an opponent, it's all about getting more reps in. And the best place you can actually start getting more reps in every single day is at home. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you a drill you can do at home to help you start getting in those quality reps so you can start closing that gap and beat better players. So the very first thing I want you to understand whenever we think about a stroke is that we wanna think about the kinetic chain, AKA basically how we use ground force and we push that ground force through our bodies and then to the racket. And that generally means through our legs, and then our hips, our shoulders, arm, and then our racket. Keep that in mind. So on the left, I have Djokovic, and on the right, I have center. Now you're gonna go through that same model of idea that they're gonna load their weight first. They have to store some energy. And you're gonna see this from both players. Now key to loading weight is when we load weight right here for Djokovic, what you can tell is his foot is completely down and he's loaded his weight in a way that he's kind of loaded it back so he can push it forward because we need that load or that energy to move in the direction we wanna hit the ball. The other thing you're gonna notice with Djokovic is uh, the separation between the hips and the shoulders. If I run this a little bit more and let him really start separating those shoulders, what you're gonna notice is his hips are around this line, but his shoulders is this. I Meaning his hips are here and his shoulders are like this. They're going past to create that coil and that separation between the hips and shoulders. One other key element that I want everybody to look at is the amount of space he has between his arms. They're not tight to his body. It's very loose in a way. Now, when we look at center taking the same back swing, you're gonna look at him coming down, boom. He's gonna use that back foot right there, boom. And what we can see, again, just like Djokovic, that uh, weight is loaded in the back leg, prepared to push his weight forward. And you can see definitely right here, that front foot is off the ground, meaning that all the weight pretty much is loaded in his back foot. You're gonna see the same spacing like we saw in Djokovic. And if I run through a little bit more, great angle because we can see the separation between the hips and the shoulders, how the shoulders are more rotated at this angle than the hips. And this is the start. He's loading energy so he can start uncoiling, which is the next phase. You can see both of them with the front foot slightly up because they're starting to shift their weight. And as Djokovic lands right here, he starts to shift his weight forward. Now, one crucial thing that that's hurt so many players is their toe position on the front foot. This is crucial because if you have your toe position along the baseline in general, it'll be harder for you to do this next phase, which is rotate. And this is why you see both of their toes Djokovic facing this way and center facing this way because it allows them to open up their hips, allowing their hips to rotate. They're gonna start pushing and rotating. And the nice thing I love about Djokovic's shorts, you're gonna see this nice little white stripe come around, representing his rotation of his hips. And you'll see his kneecap start to face more in towards the court. And so you'll see those things happening here, meaning that he's rotating and that rotation is pulling the shoulder around. So you see them almost moving in tandem right here, the hips and the shoulder, and then from here, you stop seeing the hips move as much. We're transferring that energy up and then the shoulder continues. So you can see I'll leave a mark right along this line to keep it covered. And we're gonna watch how the shoulder's doing more of the driving now. You Couple frames and you can see how the hips have barely moved. But the key is the shoulders are continuing to drive through the ball. So we got contact back here and that shoulder's driving out through the ball. Same thing with center here. You're gonna see if you watch that Nike sign, that Nike sign should disappear because he's gonna start rotating. Bingo, can't see the Nike sign. The hips and the shoulder are rotating together and boom, you see that left arm extended and driving. Look at the frames here, one, two, three, where the rack is just driving out. And I think that's one key distinction that a lot of pros do on their backhands where a lot of recreational players start to come off the backhand. I think it's really important that we understand that when we're coming up, most players are trying to wipe the ball, where if you watch the racket here of Djokovic, frame by frame, there's not a lot of up and down action with the racket. The racket's not being brushed through the ball. And so you can see that here as, as I go frame, 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 frame. Even here, the racket's almost even. Here, 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 even there. Not a lot of working the uh, racket around where I see a lot of recreational, recreational players, they're so quick to get to that finish. They're like instantly here, their arms are tucked in here and they never reach that extension. And if you can see the same thing with center here, if I mark his angle of his racket going into the ball, boom, 
let's go frame by frame here. Oh, too many frames. But you can see it's still below or even, 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 even. Look how they both have this great long extension through the ball. And I think this is one thing that so many players don't do. And now from that extended position, after they've completely extended, you'll now see them both, after the ball's completely gone, start to get to their finished position. And this is really important to see because I think so many players go instant contact and they're going, okay, I'm done. Boom, straight to the finish. Where you see the pros are extending out, the ball's completely gone, and then as an after effect, they bring the racket around just to de dissipate the energy. So now let's go do some drills so you can start learning how to do this at home. Okay, here I am in my office, and all you need to do any of these moves is just a stretchy band of any sort. This is kind of one that has the hook or the handles, or you can have a straight stretchy band. And if you want to, you can use a little bit of a weight. So I have like a weight over here to set up to about 10 pounds. You don't have have to use this. With a lot of the stretchy bands, you can just put it inside a door just to create that resistance. So the very first thing we want to do is talk about the load, meaning that when the ball's coming, that we're moving back to load our weight back so we can then shift it forward. And so what I recommend you doing is just shadowing, get used to loading back and shifting forward. One way I like to think about this is if I'm almost like going from side to side here. If I was just going from side to side and I'm going to add in a little bit more of my legs, bend and forward. And so we're gonna go bend and forward. And one thing, and I'm doing this, is making sure that I'm not really doing that much with my hands. Now, when I use a weight, being just 10 pounds here, all I'm gonna have the weight here in front of me, I'm gonna go bend and forward. And you'll feel a lot more engagement with your back hip. Couple notes when we do the back hip and we're doing the bend, is that a lot of times your toe's gonna be pointing this way, we saw that in the video, whether you're going back or even when I'm going forward, to then shift my weight. My toe is gonna to be facing to the side to help load the weight of my hip. The next thing is when I go forward, we wanna make sure my toe's slightly facing forward. It doesn't have to be, you don't want it to be facing directly forward, but slightly avoid facing where the toe's this way. So where I would practice this is do probably like 12 to 15 reps. We're just trying to build some endurance, not like build muscle or anything. So we're just going here and here, okay? Here and here. And even here, you see my hands rocking, that's totally okay, we're not doing the swing. This is a great exercise you can start doing to really develop your feeling of the load. The very next position we're gonna work on is our rotation, meaning our hip rotation. And so what we wanna do is, with our toes slightly open, just rotate forward. And we can do that by making sure my heel comes up and that my uh, kneecap starts to point in towards my other toe. If you do this, this is gonna automatically rotate your hips. And so with the band, or I have it set up against the weights, I'm gonna hold it, pretty much around my hip area right here, and I'm just gonna rotate a little bit. Now, this is probably a little bit of exaggeration, but it just gets you to feel your hips rotating. Because ideally what we wanna do after feeling this rotation a couple times is take my arms away from my uh, body, just like this, and I'm gonna rotate a little bit with my hip, and then I'm gonna extend my arm here. So making sure we have that extension. And this is kind of that second part where we saw that rotation and extension. Now a couple keys when I'm extending, notice how for right now this uh, rubber band isn't touching my body. And this is one of the mistakes I think a lot of recreational players make is that they get to the finish too soon. You can see how the rubber band's wrapping around my body compared to extending. And I'm not just extending with my arms, I'm extending by pushing my shoulder forward. And so what you can do with that is hold your left hand here and just hold it with your left hand and feel like you're taking this and pushing it all the way out. Pushing it all the way out and then adding your right hand and push them both all the way out. You can see what happens here. Push all the way out. And if we put it all together, you might feel a little resistance on the, uh, since it's wrapping around my body this way. I'm gonna go back, out. Okay, I'm loading, coiling, out. One more quick note, when I'm loading and coiling, I wanna make sure my shoulders go past and there's some separation with my hips. My shoulders go past a little bit and then I'm rotating out. And this is how you can practice this at home and create some resistance. And then what you can do is just start using your racket. So from here now, I have that same feeling. I'm rotating out, rotating out, and then I can finish. Rotating out, 
and then I can finish. You can put it all together smoothly. So this is a great exercise you can do at home because you can start building in more reps. The more reps you can get, the faster you can improve. And this is the key to leapfrogging and getting better in your opponent. Now, if you wanna know how to do this for your forehand, make sure you go watch this video.